What's up and welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for February 24, 2022. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes. And for the very first time, and I, I can't believe it, two times in one week, it's my first time hosting with somebody that I've known for years. How have we me. not done this already? Lucy I James, I don't it. know. GameSpot.com's Lucy James Games. How are I... you doing, Lucy? Broadly fine. Mm-hmm. In spite of factors. Yes, you know, yes, factors. Just, we'll be getting into some of that today. Yeah. Uh, some good, some bad, some some trivial, some really, really big deal stuff. But that's what we do here on Kind of Funny Games Daily. Now, I do want to give a shout out to you. You got a new a new little kitty. I did Peanut. <laughs> Peanut. Um, official. Like I felt, I felt ridiculous because I just like registered her for the vet, and then I, I'm getting all these emails being like, "Oh, we're really excited to see Peanut," and I'm like, "What have I done?" I'm like. I'm like the person who calls their kid something ridiculous, but they, um, no. Do they not she's... include your last name in there? Because Peanut, Peanut James, James. I feel like that works. I hope so. Yo, Peanut, Peanut James is, is really, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut James, that was, that was my nickname because I was small as a kid. No, not really. Um, but like, yeah, I did. And so she's finally settled. She woke me up at 6 a.m. throwing up. So I'm fully immersed in like the the cat owning experience you'll probably you might see her pop around her toys are in that drawer so -hmm. if you see her she'll be there yeah yeah everyone keep your keen eyes peeled you know what i'm talking about maybe get a little peanut action in your life as you are watching this episode of kind of funny games daily today we are talking about a new pokemon presents coming very soon nintendo getting into the 2022 acquisition game some fallout new vegas 2 rumors and more. Of course, you can watch the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, or you can watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or roosterteeth.com. If you wanted to get it as a podcast, just search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny games daily, and we'll be right there for you. It's magic just like that. Uh, if you wanted to get the show ad free, if you want the exclusive post show that we do for each and every episode, you got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like our Patreon producers, Gordon McGuire at James Davis May. Pranksy, Manny the Bagel Boy Sanchez, and Black Jack. We appreciate you all so very, very much. Remember, you can use the Epic Creator Code Kinda Funny on all Epic Store and Epic in-game purchases like Rocket League and Fortnite to help support our channel. So much cool stuff to do. A little housekeeping for you. Our Elden Ring review is live now. The Kinda Funny Games cast. It features me, it features Bless, it features Andy Cortez, and the one and only Tamor Hussein. So you got to check that out. But also, go check out his proper review over on GameSpot.com. It is a beautifully, beautifully written review of him getting really, really, really into the nitty-gritty of all things Elden Ring. Isn't that right, Lucy? I couldn't agree more. Now, Tam, like, puts his puts the work into everything that he does. And I think Elden Ring is, like, it was this huge insurmountable task and just seeing the way that he tackled it and like obviously he had this thread that really popped off yesterday about how late code came in but like he spent the time and like he wrote such a beautiful review and you can tell that it comes from a a person who loves and appreciates soul games loves and appreciates they're not for everyone but really respects that game for what it's done and how it's moving games forward and so it's a great review i think that and Deathloop are two of my favorite reviews that he's ever done, so go check that one out too. But yeah, his Elden Ring review in progress, review in progress, because he's still not finished because it's a massive game. But yeah, yeah, please go check it out. Go check that out. Today we're brought to you by Purple Mattress and Door. Oh, last thing I want to say, there's a new episode of the Kind of Funny podcast uh, that's up live right now on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny, where we talk a whole lot of shit about a whole lot of things. Uh, was it a good episode, Kevin? Yeah. It was fine. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. Yeah. That's actually what we uh, titled the episode. The episode title is called, eh, this episode's just okay. So <laughs> go check that out if you want to see if we, we talk about um, me dyeing my beard or not. Um, for a Bo, you didn't do it, you coward. I did do it, Kevin. Do you not fucking see it? It didn't goddamn work. I dyed this shit jet black and it didn't work. It didn't work, Kevin. <laughs> the white hair pushed through. <laughs> I had to sneak out last night. Gia had no idea what I was doing. I had to come up with excuses of why I'm going to fucking Walgreens. It's this whole goddamn thing. What'd you say? What'd you say? I said I had to go get duct tape because Kevin's coming over. (laughs) And she believed it because that makes a lot of sense. Anyways, go watch the podcast. Uh, We have a whole bunch of things, including what is. 
the white came through, Kevin. It first revered. Uh, the Roper Report. We have eight news stories today. <laughs> A baker's dozen. Thank you very much for sticking with that. Now, very, very hard pivot from a bunch of shenanigans to some extremely, extremely real shit. Uh, This comes from the GSC Game World Twitter, the stalker developer. Um, They posted, Kevin, if you could please bring up that tweet. As of today, the Russian Federation has officially declared war on Ukraine. Our country woke up with the sounds of explosions and weapons fire, but is ready to defend its freedom and independence, for it remains strong and ready for anything. The future is unknown, but we hope for the best, uh, are, ever, are, are ever sure of our armed forces and our belief in Ukraine. We thus address all of our colleagues in the gaming industry, players, bloggers, or anyone else who sees this post in their news feed. Share this. Do not stand aside and help those in need. Special aid account to support the armed forces of Ukraine. There's a number you can help. Transfers are possible from all over the globe. Through pain, death, war, fear, and inhuman cruelty, Ukraine will persevere as it always does. From GSC Game World. Uh, Lucy, I know this is a, a very horrible time we're in right now with everything going on um and i just wanted to bring this up at the top of the show just to address it this is a thing that's happening it's affecting the world's affecting video games some things are a little more important than that right now but um yeah yeah absolutely and it's like it's such a weird one and it's like one of those things you're gonna tell your kids is like where were you when Russia declared war on Ukraine and it was like oh I was you know working my silly little job in video games and it's one of those things that like really brings to mind just you know what happened like put centers you a little bit and like reminds you of what's going on in the rest of the world and I think it's really important for everyone to like stay informed with reputable sources don't just you know believe everything you see go viral from like unverified sources on twitter and also support the people of ukraine as much as possible do everything that you can do because yeah the human cost is going to be hopefully very minimal but you never know it's it's awful like it's yeah i i can't believe that it's happening yep I can't either. Um, and again, just uh, please stay tuned to all this stuff. And yeah, keep keep your eyes out on everybody. And there's a ton of ways to help. But you can check out that stalker tweet for more information on that. Uh, story number two, again, pivoting now back to a yeah. lot more fun conversations. Uh, yeah. There's a new Pokemon Presents live stream coming February 27th on Pokemon Day. This comes from Michael Warder at Polygon. Lucy, do you know why February 27th is Pokemon Day? I know. I know. I know why. Why Apple Day is the like July seventeenth or whatever it is. It's because that's the emoji. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like Pokemon it is, Day. It is because twenty seven years ago on this day, Pokemon Green and Red versions oh, were released in that makes Japan. More sense. Which is just insane to think about. I don't like that. I don't like that number no. at all. Uh, no. But it's real, and that's but what's I mean, happening. To be fair, though, we didn't get it in the West for, like, another year. So for us, it's only, like, 26 years. You're right, you're like, right, yeah. The silver lining is mm-hmm. we're not as old as we think we are. Yeah, the gold and silver lining, that of course. That math sounds wrong. We're not <laughs> that old, are we? Yeah, we are, Kevin. Know. Jesus. Yeah. We've got... Pensions of stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Pokemon Company will stream a new episode of Pokemon Presents on Sunday, February 27th, the day also known as Pokemon Day. Uh, Sunday's Pokemon Presents live stream, basically the equivalent of a Pokemon focused Nintendo Direct, will kick off at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific, and will run for about 14 minutes, according to a tweet from the Pokemon Twitter account for Japan. It's not clear what the next Pokemon Presents live stream will offer, but the Pokemon Company's already Already getting smaller announcements out of the way in the lead up to Sunday's episode. Updates for Pokemon Cafe Remix, Pokemon Unite, Pokemon Go, and the series 25th anniversary event have been rolling out in the week ahead of Pokemon Day. Lucy, I don't know how big a Pokemon person you are. Do you do you have any any thoughts on this at all? I so I'm the type of person where for years I would get every single new Pokemon release. The only one I've ever actually completed is Red. And I kind of kid myself every time that I will complete a new Pokemon. The last one I got was Sword and Shield, obviously British. I was like, okay, this could be the one. And I just didn't. And so I I gave up. I didn't get Arceus. I didn't get Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I still love Pokemon, but like I'm I'm very much rooted in original 151 and then uh Grookey. Yeah. That's you oh, know, Grookey. like the, the, mm-hmm. that's it. Yeah. And so yeah. my knowledge of it is like I respect the hell out of Pokemon, 
but it's 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 like pro wrestling where I feel like it's impenetrable for me to get into it now. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, it has been going for 27 years, which is <laughs> nuts. God, yeah, there. This is a, an interesting timed Pokemon Day because we just had the back-to-back releases of yeah. Diamond and Pearl being a new type of remakes that uh, that they've done, and then we have Pokemon Arceus that literally just came out. That is a brand new kind of mm. third, fourth pillar, depending on how you look at it, of Pokemon game um, that kind of seemed to be a new type of core entry in the franchise, kind of doing something different, a little bit more console based even though with the switch that gets a little convoluted but what could they even announce here because despite it being really really close to the november release of Mm. brilliant diamond shining pearl the january release of arceus it's been a while since gen 8 which was sword and shield Mm. can this be gen 9 i think that might be a little too early but also I can't believe last time we got a Pokemon Presents, last Pokemon Day, it was the announcement of all the aforementioned games I just said, including Arceus. So, maybe? I mean, yeah, like, is it too early for an expansion to Arceus or something like that or adding something to the more to the decks? Like, if anything, I'm really intrigued to see how they're going to support that game. Like, it's a nice deviation, or, like, it's a cool way of uh, expanding on the Pokemon stuff. Like, I was listening to the episode of The Besties about it, and they were like, yeah, it's weird that you don't actually really have to battle much in it. And so I'm interested to see how the Pokemon company takes that going forward. However, though, like, with Pokemon Cafe Remix, Pokemon Unite, Pokemon Go, like, I wouldn't be surprised if another concert or something was coming. Then they're not necessarily the titles that I'm interested in right now. Like Pokemon Go, yes, I was definitely caught up in that for a while. I haven't even tried Pokemon Unite. But one thing I'll say is that it's just it's just nice to see. I think Pokemon companies always done this. Like they've always tried to support their games, like Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Home and whatever, and like mm-hmm. try to have backwards compatibility whenever they can. And like the ongoing support for stuff is really cool. So I appreciate it's not for me. I haven't mm-hmm. been keeping up with it. But if you're a Pokemon fan, I really hope there's something exciting out there for you. Well, that's what I think is kind of cool. Them putting out these updates for Cafe Remix, Unite, Go, and all that stuff, like in the week leading into it, kind of feels mm. like they're getting some of those smaller announcements out of the way, Just which get is them out the way. which is a little yeah. bizarre for Pokemon because we Pokemon Sleep, we're still waiting on it. Where's it at? When we get in an update on this mm-hmm. thing, uh, never forget that Pokemon presentation from a couple of years ago. Uh, but I think that there's a equal chance that we're going to get some like really cool big announcements or kind of just like an update. Hey, it's Pokemon Day. Thank you for enjoying yeah. Arceus. Here's some minor updates. Like I think we'll get some stuff that kind of allow you to trade the Pokemon between Brilliant Diamond, Shiny Pearl and Arceus, make them kind of like connect a little bit more. Like those yeah. type of updates I think would make sense. Um, I think it might be a little too early to announce a major like DLC expansion yeah. for Arceus, but at the same time, why not? You know, we're in this new era of, of Nintendo and Pokemon kind of understanding what DLC can be. For their mm. systems so i wouldn't be surprised if they did it, announce it to come out in june or something like that yeah. um so that's one option uh pokemon let's go johto so gold and silver let's go games oh there you go i was gonna say like do you think they would take anything from the back catalog and modernize it like let's go pikachu was a lot of fun like i really really enjoyed that and so i wonder if they would apply that formula like the kind of sim- like simplifying pokemon yeah. like going back to the to the old games that people really really love yeah when uh when we last year at this time predicting what they were going to announce at the pokemon day uh, 2021 uh i was convinced that it was not going to be what turned out to be uh brilliant diamond shining pearl i thought it was going to be let's go togepi and let's go pichu so i do think at some point we're going to get those i think it might be a little too early especially because cyndaquil was a starter in arceus but i that might be a little too in the weeds that no one gives a shit. Um, but that's an option. And then another thing that I think would be unlikely to be at a Pokemon uh, presents and is more likely for a Nintendo Direct, but timing wise, I think would be cool is some of the N64 Pokemon games coming to Ooh, um, yeah. the Switch Online. So Pokemon yeah. Stadium, Pokemon Stadium 2, Snap, Pokemon Puzzle Challenge, that would be or Puzzle League. Yeah, Puzzle League Challenge was the Game Boy one. That'd be awesome. Um, but I think that might be a little less likely, but still very exciting. You never know. I mean, I wonder... I don't know. I, Pokemon Company, everyone always assumes Nintendo like owns them. So maybe they just will go out on a limb and be like, nah, 
This is our time to shine. This is our show. We're announcing that stuff here. Screw you, Nintendo. You had your chance. Yeah. You didn't mention yeah. us in your last direct. You're fine. And I think the the last thing that they could announce that would be exciting to a lot of people and a little out of left field in a classic Pokemon way would be a Pokemon Stadium successor on the Ooh. Switch, like a I game that is a little snap. more, but but a little more focused on the combat and like like the tournament play of the 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 games, but like prettier and like I, I don't I don't even know what that would look like these days because like I don't yeah. know, but potentially maybe another we'll Pokken. Yeah, that's a, a good point was that too. Just one and done? What was that two? Well, there was one and then they ported it to the Switch with yeah. I think with some new characters and stuff, but we'll have to stay tuned. It's happening this Sunday. We will not be live reacting at 6 a.m. to it, but stay tuned to kind of funny games daily on Monday for all the updates on that. Uh story number three. Nintendo buys a game developer <gasps> that it's worked with for almost 40 years. This comes from Eddie McCooch over at GameSpot. Hey. 2022 continues to be a big year for mergers and acquisitions in video games, and now Nintendo is taking part. The company has announced it's buying its longtime collaborator, SRD Co. Limited. You may not know SRD by name, but the company has been working with Nintendo for almost 40 years. In a major development, SRD came up with the idea for Mario to be able to jump higher in the original Super Mario Brothers. Most recently, they worked on Game Builder Garage, Ring Fit Adventure, and 1-2 Switch with nintendo uh, nintendo is buying a hundred percent of the company's outstanding shares for an undisclosed fee srd was founded in 1979 and has worked with nintendo since then on a multitude of games including a ton of the early nes games and the donkey kong legend of zelda that type of stuff uh they said buying srd will help strengthen the management base of them and to help secure the availability of software development resources for nintendo uh the mario maker also said buying srd will help in facilitating an anticipated improvement in software development efficiency uh, they said it will only have a minor effect on nintendo's overall business results this announcement of the buyout of srd comes not long after nintendo said it didn't plan to buy many new studios but there are always exceptions in 2021 nintendo purchased another longtime collaborator next level games the makers of mario strikers uh, who are now releasing mario strikers battle league they also did luigi's mansion 3 a couple years ago hmm. what you think about this loose it's interesting. Also, I love how a lot of like the Japanese development studios have really boring names. Like SRD sounds like an accountant firm. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, I got my taxes done by SRD. Um, but no, I think it's interesting in like for Nintendo to kind of not only entrust other studios with its properties and you know get them into help, but like to outwardly buy them. I always think is very exciting. I don't see Nintendo going the full, you know, doing the Microsoft thing and just buying up everyone. But, like, they've worked with this studio for a long time. Clearly, it's in there. It's in the pipeline to collaborate more with them. Like, the fact that they can say, okay, now you're working on this, now you're working on this. It shows, like, a long-term strategy for Nintendo, which I think is only ever a good thing. Um, so it's, 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 like, it's a weird one because it's slightly inside baseball, but it's also just, like, just nice, you know? Yeah, I mean, it definitely is classic Nintendo, like looking at them over the decades of these companies yeah. that would kind of be like what we used to call second party. Um, that was more of a rarity, like, and I guess it is more of a, a Japanese company focused thing. Like we had that a little bit like with Insomniac and PlayStation, yeah. where it's like Insomniac could and did make games for Xbox. And then eventually PlayStation's like, you know what? We want to make this shit official. Uh, with Nintendo, it's always been a little bit different because they have companies like Grezzo that they work with and, uh, you know, Retro and all that. But then Retro, they ended up eventually getting in. And now with SRD, they got them in. So it's the and next level games, just like they were talking about in the story. So I don't think this is too big of a surprise. I do think that it, it's a little funny uh, to have this new story in comparison to all the other acquisition talk oh, yeah. that we've had. Like the $69 billion and it's like... I just like it, just a nice little studio. We'll just bring Nintendo's in, going you know? Nintendo yeah, over fine. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo's doing its own thing, going its yeah, own way. Exactly, but you know, going its own way results in things like One Two Switch that you yeah. know people are kind of like, mm, I don't know about. But then things like Ring Fit Adventure that we all look at and we're just like, what the fuck is this? And then it oh, comes man. out and becomes one of the biggest selling Switch games, something that people love. Like, I, I like that Nintendo always has that. We're gonna roll the dice, and people are always gonna talk shit when they first hear about it, and it's not always gonna. End end up proving people wrong but pretty often it does so that's that's yeah. kind of cool and srd seemed to be a team of very talented people that that pushed in that direction yeah good. And, it, and if it's like and if it guarantees work for those 
developers, then that's that's a good thing. And also, mm. like, just want to say, I still have beef with Drago. Drago mm. from Ring Fit? Mm -hmm. I hate that dragon. He's too buff. <laughs> He's too buff. And like, we gotta nerf Drago, dude. We gotta nerf him. Stop making me do squats. <laughs> it's an amazing game. Ring Fit is probably like one of the best things that I ever got for my Switch. Like it's fantastic. So I'm just happy for them for that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, story number four: Fallout Ooh. New Vegas Two is reportedly in very early talks at Microsoft. This comes from Jordan Midler at Video Games Chronicle uh, by way of the one and only Jeff Grubb speaking on his premium giant bum. Yeah. Giant bomb, bomb. <laughs> <laughs> giant bomb show Grub Snacks, which is paywalled and then transcribed by Video Games Chronicle, which is why I'm crediting Jordan here. Buy, uh, buy yourself is... a giant bomb premium subscription. Or Just that too. On the sale, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Venture Beats Jeff Grubb claimed that original developer Obsidian could create a sequel to the classic RPG now that it's under the same roof as license holder Bethesda. Quote, this is very early, but people have begun to have talks and say these words in sentences, and these words are Obsidian and New Vegas too, Grubb said. We're talking years and years away. There's at least an interest in conversations happening about making something like that actually a reality. Grubb added, a lot of people at Microsoft think that this could work, and there's a lot of interest to make it happen. Fallout New Vegas is a 2010 action role-playing game developed by Obsidian Entertainment and published by Bethesda Softworks, for those that don't know. Back in 2013, Obsidian CEO claimed he was keen to create a sequel to the New Vegas uh, to New Vegas, and shared some of his ideas for a follow-up. Quote, oh, we'd love to do Fallout New Vegas 2. It would be awesome. Uh, if I think of going from Fallout 1 to Fallout 2, we tried to associate the two areas somewhat closely. It wasn't just, oh, we're going to do this 2,000 miles from here. So I think if we were to do Fallout New Vegas 2 or just a new Fallout, we would probably separate it from what the internal team at Bethesda are doing. We'd keep it on the West Coast because we're West Coast people. They're East Coast, so it makes sense. Uh, obviously, that's from a long time ago, 2013, so I don't know that it holds any water now days especially with how many acquisitions and things like that have happened uh but what do you think lucy i mean it's kind of inevitable in a way like even just the fact that the conversation is happening because as soon as microsoft bought bethesda and like they'd already had obsidian my cat has now decided it's time to play so if you hear a little ball jingling around that's it's her it's play peanut time. time it's peanut time um but no it's like it felt inevitable it's like what people were clamoring for and so do I think it's gonna happen? I hope it does. I don't want it to be I don't want it to go down the way of Beyond Good and Evil 2. A mm -hmm. game that was like people clamoring for, then it was announced, and then it just, I don't know, kind of vanished. Um but like Fallout New Vegas 2, I think especially after like Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 maybe didn't like hit the highs of some of the older games. Uh well, 76, I mean, has turned it around by all accounts. Like, it's still very popular. I'd be interested to see what Obsidian and Microsoft and Bethesda could make. Am I going to be like, yeah, this is... Am I going to set all my, uh, my hopes on this coming out? I think it's probably inevitable, but I'm, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Like, hasn't it been, like, four years since Bethesda announced Elder Scrolls Six And, like... Still nothing of that. Yeah, we're getting Starfield this year, but like, if you think about it, it's it's gonna be weird because like, who's the the license holder now, and who's and like, and if Obsidian's making it, what does that mean for things like Avowed and um, Grounded and everything else they're working on? Like, is there even a team set up? I'm glad the conversation's happening, but it's not gonna be anytime soon. Wow. You said four years, and I was like, that sounds yeah. right, but it sounds so wrong. And yeah, no. June 10th, 2018, Elder Scrolls yeah. 6 officially announced. That's, whew. Yeah, yeah I, I'm kind of with you where I do think that it is inevitable where people love that iteration so much that going back to that just kind of makes sense, especially given what Microsoft has been building the last couple of years with, with its – ecosystem infrastructure all that stuff of having the teams having game pass wanting to continually put out like big game experiences that people can kind of live in like they are now the owners of so so many high quality western rpg developers right so i think any 
anything that has name recognition, they're going to want to kind of double down on. I think we're going to start to see a lot more of that in the the next couple of years as the Microsoft acquisition acquisitions kind of settle in um and those developers are kind of able to understand what it means to be a microsoft studios uh developer so um i think grubs on the money here obviously he, he knows something he's heard this from somewhere that i do imagine is reputable so will it be in the next couple of years no but i do think that we'll probably get an announcement for this in the next three years you know yeah and then and then we'll just wait like another four Mm -hmm. for it Mm -hmm. to come out but no i mean i think i think it's really exciting and it's like part of me do you ever feel this as well like part of you is like oh god i wish games like wouldn't rely so heavily on old stuff i wish they'd take risks on new ip and yet every time you hear like a oh there could be a fallout new vegas too it's like oh okay great i'm really excited about that like screw your new ideas like what do you got what do you got take me back yeah, I, I kind of fall on the opposite side of that, where I think that games, and this is probably an unpopular take, but I have it anyway, so I'm going to stand with it, yeah. where I, I just feel like games have gotten so vast and can be so many different things, and mm-hmm. it's not just kind of like, hey, here are the 20 games that come out a year, take them or leave them. It's like there are yeah. hundreds of games coming out, from indie yeah. all the way to AAA, quadruple A, whatever you want to call it. thousands at this point, surely. Like, and so we, like, just, like we just talk about the ones that manage to break through, right? Yeah. Totally. So it's like, I, I think that uh, there, we shouldn't be scared and shy yeah. away from going back to things that people love because people love them and want more of them uh, while also pushing forward and doing new ideas and, and making new things happen. But we're getting a lot of that. Like, I, I think that we have pushed through the time where it's like, it, it's either a sequel or it's nothing, or it's new because video games were new. And so anything you put out was going to be a new IP. So yeah. I'm excited to see how it goes. But like I was saying with Microsoft, like I think they're in a unique position now where they have so much manpower and so much financial resources that they can do both without breaking a sweat. There could be new IP. There could be going back to the well. There could be remakes. There could be remasters. There could be sequels. Like they could do it all and at a very quick clip. So Mm. we'll see how it all goes. The thing that, that interests me right now is like, who is calling the shots in terms of long-term strategy at Microsoft? As in, like, for the portfolio as a whole, you have, like, what, 20-plus uh, first-party studios. Do Beth- Does Bethesda still have the autonomy to set its own pipelines and schedules and releases? Or is that now dictated by Microsoft, who's like, okay, well, you know, 2021, Halo is the temple release. 2022 is going to be this. 2023, that, like, 2022 could be Starfield. And then 2023, okay, now we need you to step in. Like, I, I really, I'm really intrigued as to how it's all working. But it's like, it's exciting. There's so much, there's so much coming down the pipeline. Like, perfect dog. Yeah, totally. Like, I mean, no, it's so exciting, but I, I do think that we can kind of look at what's going on. And granted, we're in a very unique situation with the mm-hmm. pandemic and also with the acquisitions, just the way that they work. Like so many things can't just be like, all right, cool, turnkey. Now they're yeah. acquired and they're they're in. It's like there's time that re- is required to kind of like fit in and, and find what your new home actually feels like and looks like. But I do think that Microsoft's been doing this a lot the last couple of years. So every new company they acquire, they're more used to what that looks like and how to like onboard them into the the different um kind of systems whether it's pr marketing development like all that stuff needs to kind of like work in synergy between what was and what now is with microsoft studios but when you look at last year they didn't run away from releasing halo and forza within weeks of each other right like because it caters to different audiences completely like um and i think microsoft are in an amazingly unenviable position. No, they are in an enviable position because they have so many studios that can cater to so many. And it's yeah. like, yeah, acquisitions, like giant conglomerates, not great, but like it's an exciting time to be an Xbox owner because you basically, all tastes are pretty much catered for. All yeah, totally. Be. Absolutely. And I got to imagine, I would bet that it is Phil Spencer and the team kind of making the decisions of when things actually happen. However, I bet that they are giving the teams full control over yeah. when telling them the, the the what puzzle pieces do we have to play with? Like what colors of paint do we have to play with is probably yeah. the better way to say that there. So Phil we'll Spencer see. just sat in front of a giant Asana board, like yes. a giant Trello. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, mm-hmm. everyone, next 10 years of Xbox, here we go. Yeah, let's go. But before we go, Let me tell you about our sponsors. 
I don't care how soft or firm your mattress topper is. I don't even care how heavy your blanket is. There's only one thing you need to get a good night's sleep, and that's a good mattress. Get the only thing you truly need for a great night's sleep, a purple mattress. Only purple mattresses have the gel flex grid. It's a super stretchy, ultra squishy material that adapts and flexes around pressure points and doesn't retain heat. It's amazingly supportive and cushioning in all the right places, no matter how you sleep. How do I know so much about it? Well, of course you've known for years, Joey's used a purple mattress. Mattress. You know Tim uses the purple pillow, and now the future class of video games blessing Eddie Oye Jr. is sleeping on a purple mattress, and he tells me all the time it keeps him cool, comfortable, and gives him a great night's sleep. Getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash kinda funny and use the code kinda funny. For a limited time, you can get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash kinda funny. Code kinda funny for 10% off your order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash kinda Kinda funny, promo code kinda funny, terms apply. Your to-do list is absolutely bonkers between those meetings, errands, chores, and making sure you get some you time too. So make sure you get a little time to yourself with some help from DoorDash. DoorDash brings you what you want to eat right now, right to your door. Desperately craving late night snacks? Or have you forgot one key ingredient for dinner? Or maybe you just wanna stock up for the week? Well. DoorDash has it all in one app. How do I know so much about DoorDash? Well, I'm Greg Miller and I use DoorDash way too much. Uh, if you were watching the Kind of Funny podcast when we were talking about a whole bunch of different stuff, Nick mentioned the ice cream place he really liked. And I said, where is there one around me? And I said, yes, there is. And I ordered from it and I had it on the post show. I was eating ice cream on the post show, giving you a review of the ice cream all because of DoorDash. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code Kind of Funny. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees in your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter the code kind of funny. Don't forget that's code kind of funny for 25% off your first order with DoorDash subject to change terms apply. And we're back with story number five knockout city is going free to play and EA will no longer be involved. This once again comes from Eddie Makuch over at GameSpot.com. Knockout city, the Dodge brawl game from Bell and studios is becoming free to play. On all platforms later this year with the launch of its newest season. In a blog post, Velen said it's keen to extend the game to a potentially much larger audience around the world by dropping the price of entry to zero dollars. The changeover is expected to begin on June 1st with the launch of Knockout City's year two plans. Anyone who purchases Knockout City before the changeover in business models will receive a loyalty bundle that comes with cosmetics, XP boosts, and $2,000 worth of in-game credits called Hollow Bucks. <sighs> uh, while this will be the first time in Knockout City being completely free, Villain offered the game on Game Pass on day one back in May 2021, and it came to PlayStation Plus in November that year. Another big change for Knockout City going forward is that Velen Studios will take over as the game's publisher. Previously, Electronic Arts was the publisher. Velen thanked EA for its support over the years and said self-publishing will help the studio fully realize its vision for the game. Quote, from the day we founded our studio, we've worked to deliver revolutionary new game experiences to you, our amazing community of players we couldn't have introduced knockout city to the world without the incredible support of ea originals but now as we switch to free to play the natural next step is for us to take over publishing responsibilities and work even more closely with our community we have exciting plans for knockout city and bringing publishing in-house will allow us to fully realize our vision for the long-term future of the game there's so much to look forward to because this is just the beginning also in the post felon said there's still a lot of behind the scenes work that needs to be finished before the free to play changeover and the developers are now working on that in an all hands on deck capacity due to this Knockout City Season 5 won't have as much content as previous seasons, and there won't be a new Season 5 for all pass. But this change is only temporary, and Season 6 will come back with all of that stuff as well as new features. Lucy, I'm just, what do you think? I'm, I'm just looking up EA Originals because I think, like, I was... Isn't it just, like, similar to Square Enix Collective where they sort of, like, help publish, help, fin help get you across the finish line, market, like, help you out with marketing and stuff, and then... I remember Square Enix Collective has, like, they would give you, like, a certain amount of... They would take a certain amount of your profit until you basically paid back Square, and then, like, all that profit would belong to the developer. And so I wondered if EA Originals would be something similar. Like, I it's remember... an investment on EA's part until they recoup that, and then... Yeah, the uh, EA Originals, if I remember correctly, like, they also helped out with, like, Unravel, 
right? Yeah, and, and uh, Sea of like Solitude. That. Exactly, um, yeah. And I, I remember reading a story on the show a couple of years back that they actually weren't taking any money at all. Like it was mm. just kind of like a helping out type situation. Like and a like profit that, split. Uh, at the like end. A, a marketing thing. So um, so that that's always been cool. And it's it's always been great that EA has had the originals program at all because it definitely diversified the titles they were putting out. Yeah. Um, especially a couple of years ago when it was just kind of like, here's Battlefield and here's Plant vs. Zombies and uh mm. sports games. And that's pretty much it. This was always like a nice, like, oh, cool. There's like something different. Yeah. Um, and Knockout City being one of those as well i gotta say i'm a little surprised uh at this news like the free to play yeah. not so much but them kind of leaving ea i, I wonder why you know it's why a, not just kind of continue with them? i mean it's a gamble because like obviously going free to play and if you're leaving ea then that means you are now responsible for all your marketing for all your own like server costs i'm not sure if ea were helping out on that but there's a lot of more there's a lot more expenses and so you know that profit margin is gonna be a little tighter i guess but like i feel if you want that studio to be self-sufficient like taking control of everything and you know not having to give costs back to central maybe they've just run the numbers and that's why obviously you are losing sort of the the arm of ea like all of their channels um and hopefully with ps plus and uh, games with gold like they got um a big enough sort of player base like an install base and maybe they can just like i don't know utilize the community they already have as well as grow a new one but it's it's a strange move like i did anticipate it going free to play but i didn't anticipate it leaving ea yeah well, maybe, and maybe it's just not making the money that ea wants it to but I'm kind of surprised by this story in, in multiple ways. Like, even just thinking about EA letting this happen, you know? Like, yeah. it, it seems like, sure, Knockout City's devs might be like, yeah, w w it makes more sense for us to just leave. But EA's going to be like, hey, you know what? It was nice. Go go Bye. have fun. But if that's the case, hey, good on them. That's that's cool. But yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's yeah, it's an interesting one. But, like, EA right now... I don't know, they, they're kind of having a, a rough time with Battlefield, but then they still have stuff like FIFA. So I, I wonder if this is really going to ding them in any way, you know? I would say, on the grand scheme of things, Battlefield going down the way it did is not uh, is, is more uh, noteworthy than uh, this game, Knockout City. Yeah. I almost said Breakdown City, which is an insight to my <laughs> life. Uh, no, Knockout City <laughs> like, just, you know, deciding to go out on its own. Yeah, Blessing, if you're if you're hanging out watching the oh show. Oh my god. I know you're the biggest fan of, of the game, so let us know what, what you have to say about all this. Ridiculous. Like, when we played for Play for All last year, I was like, I want to be on Bless's team every time. <laughs> I want to be on Bless's Bless. team. <laughs> Story number six. Martha is dead. Reviews are in. I uh, wanted to read a couple highlights and then show you guys the video of Greg Miller's review that uh, he recorded. Push Square, sorry, Push Square's Stuart Gipp gave it a 60, saying, while certainly an accomplished piece of storytelling, Martha is Dead's gameplay is such blatant artifice that it does the narrative a disservice to partake in it. That sounds extremely damning, but there's a lot here to like. The languid pace and detailed nature of the photography sequences are a standout. The graphics are often impressive, and the sheer bloody chutzpah of the whole thing is appealing in a grand sort of way. Shout out to you for using chutzpah. Yeah, seriously. Uh, the game can be shocking in what it shows you, but it doesn't feel exploitative. Horror should be horrific, and Martha is Dead is certainly that unfortunately perhaps not always in the way it was intended to be ign's tristan gave it a 7 out of 10 saying martha is dead is a confronting compelling and increasingly disorienting detour into darkness one that made me appropriately uncomfortable at times but ultimately left me feeling somewhat unfulfilled by its inconclusive ending it's therefore not especially satisfying in a traditional whodunit sense but as a surreal and grotesque examination of the effects of trauma it provides an unflinching and utterly absorbing ordeal to be endured rather than enjoyed and then our very own greg miller had uh, less positive things to say overall. Kev, can we play 
Martha is Dead is just a bad video game. The gameplay isn't fun, Oof, the story is nonsensical, enough. and the horror elements are just trying to gross you out. This game from developer LKA sees you take on the role of Julia as she finds her twin sister Martha's body floating near their Italian villa in 1944. Immediately, the story jumps to the unbelievable as Julia assumes Martha's identity, Martha just so happens to be deaf, and tries to blend in with her family, who conveniently are only around the house if they're asleep or passed out. My game clock says I rolled credits in about six hours, and it was rare that any of those hours were all that intriguing or bug free but it makes for a jarring experience where all the answers and action happen off screen all the legwork no reward the one bright spot would be the game's photography and dark room mechanics but rather than make these the element of gameplay it piles on morse code mini games marionette performances with fail states and slowly trudging from the house to the lake and back again i'll have a full review on next week's kind of funny games cast but in short martha is dead ends up being a game i can't even recommend to fans of good bad horror games because Martha is Dead is just a bad video game. The That's a good loop. You gotta love the loop. That's a good loop. <laughs> Roger and the team, fantastic. I don't think the loop thing is ever going to get old to me. It catches no. me off guard every single just, time. Like every time I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so there you go. Are you surprised at all about uh, where this game's landing? Honestly, I have not really been keeping tabs on it beyond like the, what was it? It got uh, censored on PlayStation. I was like, oh, okay, I did honestly with how busy this month has been, it didn't even register to me that it was out this month, which is, you know, failing on my part as someone in games media. But like listening to I saw a bunch of the kind of critical consensus earlier today, obviously Greg's review, I was like, it just doesn't sound this is for me, unfortunately. I I think I mean Tristan's a game that has to be endured rather and rather than enjoyed. I was like I mean, I no, I don't have time for that in my life right now. I just want yeah. something that, you know, makes that I feel like I'm progressing with and then I'm getting like Elden Ring, a game that technically, you know, it's difficult, but you get that real rush of like satisfaction when you beat a boss or you discover something, right? This one and the fact that, you know, people are saying that the ending isn't really great. I'm just like, yeah, I this year, last last year was the year of no replays. This year is the year of, like, only investing my time in stuff that I know is going to be really, really good. Or really, really shit. Because when it comes to TV, TV I have, like, I watch really bad stuff and really great stuff. There is no mm -hmm. in between. But mm -hmm. with games, I just want to spend my Highbrow, time. Highbrow, lowbrow. Like, it's necessary. Yeah. Balance in your life. Exactly. Um, perfectly balanced is all things should be. But with games, it's like, they are so much more of an investment. And if people I know and trust, like, I trust Greg's opinion... I will maybe grow to regret saying that, but like, <laughs> you know, I trust Greg's opinion and like what he's saying and what the kind of critical consensus is. I just don't think this one's going to be for me. Maybe like on a spooky stream closer to Halloween, but have you been, have you played this at all? No, no, I haven't. Doesn't look like it's for me. And I'm right there with you where I'm like, I, I got too much going on. I don't, I, I, I'm down to swim in sevens. I'm not down to, to swim in, in, in whatever that is. But um, Greg will be joining us on Gamescast next week to talk about his thoughts more in depth for Martha is Dead. Uh, but you can catch him today on the dice awards hosting the oh, dice yeah. awards so that, oh, that's a fun thing uh but anyways enough about greg miller let's move on to story number seven digital foundry's elden oh. ring performance results are in uh i thought this was worth bringing up because uh Nibel tweeted a some highlights of it that might be helpful to some people trying to make a choice on how they play mm -hmm. this game uh digital foundry has analyzed elden ring version 1.02 ps5 and xbox series x run at 45 to 60 frames per second in performance mode and 30 to 60 in quality mode the series x and s can benefit from variable refresh rate for a more stable 60 frames per second to get stable on ps5 it is recommended to play the playstation 4 version so that's a interesting Shit. little hack okay. out there for you if you're trying to get some better frame rate out of your Ew. PlayStation version of Elden Ring. Um, it also bit. seems like the issues plaguing the PC version of Elden Ring will not be fixed by its day one patch, unfortunately. So if all that stuff matters to you, you might want to hold off just a little longer on starting your Elden Ring mm. adventure. Otherwise, hey, some different options for you. Well, now I regret downloading the PS5 version. Yeah, <sighs> what a but world like, we live in. I know. I I'm I've been waiting for the digital foundry analysis. Obviously they do incredible work, but like um 
did you see this the other day where they tweeted out like, oh, hey, our analysis of Elden Ring won't be ready for like embargo because per the embargo, you could only capture from a certain patch. NeoGAF and like Reset Era had like a meltdown. Like the first, the first uh, post in the thread was like, well, this is going to be a shit show. And it's like, just yeah this is per the embargo this happens all the time yeah so, like, speaking of embargoes actually the embargo for the first hour of gameplay has lifted so you could also yeah. go check out andy and bless playing the first oh. hour of elden ring on youtube.com slash kind of funny games if that mm. tickles your fancy at all yeah. <sighs> <laughs> i love you Kevin. <laughs> uh story number eight our final story of the day PlayStation game captures finally coming to the PlayStation app. This comes oh from God. the PlayStation blog. Uh, we're gradually rolling out the ability to finally. share your PS5 game captures through PS app in more regions. The Americas are up first with more countries yeah. next month. The feature is currently live in Japan and Canada and is gradually rolling out in the Americas where a PlayStation app is available. PS5 console users in supported countries can access the feature by downloading the latest PlayStation app update for iOS and Android. Um, they released a FAQ for a, a bunch of uh, things here that might be interesting. Uh, video clips and screenshots of games are available in the app for 14 days after you manually create them on your PlayStation 5 console. Trophy moments and activity challenge auto captures are not uploaded. What video clips can be accessed on the PlayStation app? Clips up to 1920 by 1080 and up to three minutes in duration are uploaded. Video clips that are longer or in higher res will not be. Uh, can I use captures without Wi-Fi? Yes. Do I need a PlayStation Plus subscription to use the feature? No. The 14 okay. days stands for you no matter what. Uh, can I manually upload screenshots and videos? No. You cannot manually no. do it. You have what? to set it up and then it is cloud-based. and Things nah. are just uploaded and held for 14 days you have to mm. share from there um will a de will deleting a screenshot or video on my console also delete it from playstation nope captures can still be accessed on the playstation app for 14 days if the capture setting has been enabled will the video clip include audio yes it will include audio including microphone party chat if enabled so a whole lot of stuff there but mm. you seem pretty excited about it i am i mean it's it's mo obviously for me because <clears throat> like just through work um have to get a lot of screenshots off playstation also for tweets i legit just set up a dm thread on playstation like a message thread with zach and so like he thinks that every time i message him over playstation it's because i'm actually wanting to say something it's like no we just send each other screenshots <laughs> but also the main people who are gonna benefit from this is like guides writers mm -hmm. because i remember um Mark uh, on our team had a hell of a time getting a bunch of, I think it was, what game came out last week? Horizon, like trying to get a bunch of Horizon screenshots off his machine because the PlayStation 5 was being like super finicky with what hard drive it would accept. And so if it makes guides writers job, like the most unforgiving job in the games media, guides writing. Amen. Like, if, it, if it makes their lives easier, then I am very, very happy. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully it'll come to the Americas soon enough. But... Knowing when it's going to come is so far away. Lucy, if I want to know what's coming to Mom and Grop Shops today, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. <clears throat> Kevin? Do you have to jingle? Thank you. I lost my voice too. That was good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, Lucy, I, I love how I didn't prep you for it. And I was like, I know she knows, but like maybe she doesn't know. And here you, you just, you came in. You were ready for it. I appreciate that about you. I I could hear it through the wall mm -hmm. most days, you know, mm -hmm. but also, yeah. but also just like from watching you guys. So I was like, I'm prepped. I wish yeah. I'd like memorized it. I did have to look at my notes. But it took me so many years to memorize it and then all of a sudden one day i just realized i know it without yeah. reading it but when we did the the first kind of funny game showcase a couple of years back uh greg and i were like out in the city like mm. just being recorded for the in between bits and mm. one of our jokes was reading that and i had to do it and i was like <laughs> i do not know this and like it took way too many takes because i'm a useless human being but anyways out today we got a seto corsa competition <laughs> on ps5 Ooh. xbox series x and s we have Martha is Dead on PS5, PS4, and PC. We have Variable Barricade on Switch. We have Never Alone on Switch. We have Light yeah. Up the Room on Xbox One. We have 15 in 1 Solitaire. 
feel like one's enough, but hey, that's for you. It's on Switch. Amazing Machines on Switch. Antarctica 88 on Switch. What the fuck? Who is, that is like Zombie? A thing game? <laughs> Like, what is that? Uh, who is Zombie on Switch? Ghost on the Shore on PC and Mac, and Clousy on PC. Clousy. Uh, some new dates for you. Next week, Sifu is getting an update. Uh, they tweeted saying, We're very grateful for the amazing feedback to Sifu in China. We're excited to announce that full Chinese voiceovers will be available in Sifu game next week. Stay tuned for the full update notes. That's pretty cool. I wish that was a feature that came when it launched, but it's cool they're at least mm. getting it in close enough to launch. Um, and now it's time for a little thing I like to call reader mail, where you can go to mm. patreon.com slash kind of funny games to write in, just like Connor did. Mm. Good morning, KFGD crew. Will Dying Light, Forbidden West, and now Elden Ring start to cannibalize each other in sales moving forward? Or are they distinct enough from each other that the audience overlap is really just the hardcore gamer that plays every big release? Thanks for the insight and go get some rest. Y'all earned it this month. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I think it's also really interesting because I think is Dying Light on like last gen too? Because usually, you know, there would be sort of a you know, oh, for if if Forbidden West was only on PS5, right? You'd be like, oh, okay, well, maybe the uptick in that one would be a bit slower because it doesn't have as many people who own one compared to PS4. But I think all of them are cross-gen. They are, yeah. Yeah, so it could be really interesting. I feel, I don't know, like Dying Light, maybe it's just because of the, the, the view that I have in terms of like games media where it's like, okay, Dying Light's done. Next, One Horizon. Ne I, I wonder what the kind of retention on that game is if people... But then Dying Light had like five years of support. Elden Ring is going to be, I don't, I don't think Elden Ring is going to be as explosive in terms of sales. I think it's going to sell extremely, extremely well, but obviously it is kind of more of a niche, yeah. niche, uh, mm -hmm. more hardcore audience. Like if you like Souls games, you'll definitely probably pick this one up. But like, if you don't, there's less impetus for you to do that. Forbidden West, also like Horizon Zero Dawn sold incredibly, but like, I, don't, I honestly can't say. I'm intrigued. Yeah, I I think the answer is a, a weird mix of yes and no. Mm. Will it start to cannibalize each other's sales moving forward? Yes. But I don't think that even with that being true, that's going to affect the actual sales numbers being astronomically high for yeah. many of these games. Like, I think yeah. that there are just more gamers out there, and especially with things being cross-gen. Like This means that it's not just PS5s, it's the 100 plus million PS4s mm -hmm. out there. You look at Xbox and with the, the way they have their ecosystem set up, it's kind of just one platform to rule them all type shit. So it's like, there's just, it's easier and more accessible to people to be able to play these games mm -hmm. and purchase these games. So I think that gaming as a whole, the sales numbers are just much higher now than they yeah. ever have been in the past. And I feel like when we're talking about these big prestige titles, like uh, something like Forbidden West, for sure, there's no concern about it. Like, I think it coming out right next to these other giant games is not going to hold it back at all. I think there might be an initial cannibalization of the people out there that only have one set of $70 to spend right yeah. now. But I don't think that's going to stop them from eventually going back and buying the other games. Um, <laughs> at least not in a demonstrable number that won't outweigh the sheer newcomers that are buying more games than they ever have before. So, yeah. yeah. I think I think it'll be very interesting to see who's number one in the charts, but that's definitely not the be-all and end-all. All of these games are huge. They have long tails. And I imagine, like you said, it's 70 bucks a pop. Like, people are just going to buy the one that appeals most to them right now. Spend, I mean, each of these 40, 50 hours easily. And then move on and maybe, if they're still interested, get the next one. So I think it's only really these opening kind of weeks where people are sort of figuring out where to, which one to buy first. But I think all three are going to sell ridiculous numbers. Yeah. Because they're all good. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in Elden Ring. Um, does it become the highest selling from game? Yeah, I think it probably, I mean, like, yeah, I saw the graphic the Twitter account put out today. I've just, I don't remember seeing so many tens. I think that's definitely going to drum up a lot of interest with people. Mm -hmm. What is the highest selling from game? Is it Sekiro? I, I imagine it would be because like Bloodborne being, I know sold very Optimized well, but it is, it's tied. So yeah. Yeah, let's see. So let's do a little Google. Doing the Googs. 
Um, mm. August 10th, 2021. This comes from Screen Rant. Every From Software Soulsborne game ranked according to number of sales. Mm. Um, so a little bit outdated here, but not not too outdated. We got Demon Souls coming in at number six at one million, Bloodborne at number five at two million, Dark Souls two at two point five, Sekiro at five at number three, mm. uh, Dark Souls at five point five million copies, and Dark Souls three oh at yeah. ten million copies. Dark Souls three was the biggest Bandai Namco launch, I think, at the time, right? I literally that, just wrote a history of on this. I should. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, damn, that's that is pretty yeah. crazy. So, ten million Dark Souls three, but I think Elden Ring is going to outdo it. Yeah, because how many? I think I saw something the other day. I will Google. Uh, how many copies did? Like, did Horizon Zero Dawn sell? Because like, didn't? Oh yeah. So all of Dark Souls one, two, and three hit twenty million as a series, but Horizon mm. Zero Dawn passed twenty min twenty million sales as one game. Yeah. But I'm really intrigued by Elden Ring. Oh yeah, yeah. I want it to do so good. Definitely, Lucy. This was mm. a pleasure. So, so much surprised. fun doing this show with you. I'm yeah. sure we'll do it again in the it's future. Me. Where can people find you? Um, I'm on Twitter and Twitch, um, Lucy James Games. I'm on GameSpot. I'm doing a bunch of like Elden Ring stuff. I did a bunch of Horizon stuff. Um, and I'm on Giant Bomb where we do the very online show and we have Jeff Jeff's Bizarre Adventure where uh, me, Tam, Jeff Bacalar and our friend Super Eyepatch Wolf are watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure for the first time. And Love it that. is incredible. Hell yeah, check that out. And for everyone else, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to watch the post show that we're about to do. Until next time, I love you all. Goodbye. <laughs>